Welcome to another lesson in electronics with Mr. Esterbrooks. Today I'm going to show you how to set up a um, simple series circuit using uh, the multi-sim uh, circuit simulation software. <clears throat> when you open the application, this is multi-sim 12, which we're using this year, uh, you should get something that looks like this, a blank document, perhaps a grid, it might be black uh, background, those are configurable. <clears throat> the first thing I want you to do every time you start a new circuit, if you go to the place menu, down towards the bottom you'll see text. I want you to get in the habit of every circuit you create, type your name and the circuit number and of course I use CKT as my abbreviation and this activity is 1.3.3 and I'll just call it sample. And if you click out of there, close that, um, you can drag that over to the right or the left but leave it somewhere towards the bottom. That way, when, when we print these, uh, when you sub, uh, print and submit your circuit, um, I'll know whose it is and which circuit it's, uh, you're submitting. All right, so the way I like to uh, design my circuits is uh, I place my components first. We're going to build a simple series circuit with three resistors and a, a battery supply and a switch. So uh, all your components are going to be placed using the Place menu at the top of the screen. Then you select Component and the, um, your basic components like uh, resistors and capacitors are in the basic group here. If you don't see any components here, um, anything in here, you need to make sure it says master database up here and then for group select basic and then down here you'll see resistor and you can pick any old resistor, um, it doesn't really matter because we're going to change the value later. Notice here's my schematic symbol over here. Click OK and I'm going to drop one in here one in here and one in here. <clears throat> now depending on how your computer is configured, how your multi-sim is configured on your computer, it may pop up a dialog box and you have to click OK between um, you know dropping in each resistor. Um, but notice it's got another one on the screen ready to drop. I don't want a resistor there so don't click or else it'll put another resistor there. You just hit escape it goes away. And then um, I'm gonna make a, a circuit that goes in sort of a rectangular shape here you know, the way we always draw them, draw the schematics by hand. Um, so this one is actually sideways because the wires come out the sides. I want the wires to come up and down. So I right click on that resistor, R2, and I say rotate 90 degrees clockwise. Now it's ready to be wired in vertically. Next I'm going to need a another component, a battery or power supply, DC power supply. So those are under uh, a family called sources drop down here and you see sources right above basic. We have uh, DC power, AC power, ground, etc. Notice that DC power is the schematic symbol we use for a battery. Drop that right in. I'm going to put that off, off to the left a little bit. And again, I need to press escape to cancel that. <clears throat> um, we don't really need a, a ground for this circuit to, to be valid. If you were going to build it, you could build it without a ground, but um, really it's good practice to have something identified on the circuit as a common ground. And um, in fact, uh, multisim will not allow you to run the simulation unless you place a ground reference somewhere. So we're going to go back and um, select power sources again. You need to drop a ground in here, and we'll wire that in down um, to the negative end of the battery. Okay drag that down here just to give us something to some wires to click onto. Now <clears throat> we don't want three 820 ohm resistors so I'm going to show you how to change the values of those. We're going to use a 1.2 K ohm uh, kilo ohm resistor here. So just double click on that and in the resistance field here you just type the, the amount of resistance you want. So 1.2 K for kilo and notice it says ohms. Don't worry about the tolerance right here. If you're running a really accurate simulation and you want to put in um, legitimate tolerance uh, value resistors, you can select 10%, 5%, etc. You don't have to worry about that now. Click OK, and there you have a 1.2 kilo ohm resistor. So do the same thing for R2. Set it to 2.2 kilo ohms. And then R3, we want 3.3 kilo ohms. So the last thing we need, if we just wire this all together, we'll have a series circuit. Current will flow. 
but um, we have no way of turning it off and on. So if you have you know a flashlight or something, usually there's a switch so you can turn it off. Um, the only way right now we'd have to turn this off is to remove the battery. So the last component I'm going to place is um, back under basic again. And you'll see a group called uh, switch right here. We're going to use a switch called SPST, single pole, single throw, which is the m simplest, most basic kind of switch. It's got this little doorway looking uh, schematic symbol. Click OK. And I'm going to drop that right next to this resistor here. Notice it latches on, it's actually wired in. Click Escape. And I can click and drag that, you know, a little bit um, to give, give it some space. Uh, anytime you're designing circuits in multisim, make sure your uh, the text labels don't overlap so that they're legible um, on the screen if you need to do any troubleshooting when you're printing them out so I can read them. Last thing we need to do is wire these all together to make our actual series circuit. So if you move your mouse near the end of a component, you notice the cursor changes from an arrow to a little dot with a, a crosshair. That means it's, it's going to create a wire when you click there. So just click, let go, if I just go straight over to this one, I get this really weird, you know, 90 degree, that's no good. We want a nice rectangular circuit the way we always draw them uh, by hand. So I just click on the corner and then come over here, click that one, and now it's wired in. Do the same thing here. Click where the corner is, down to there. Oops, I missed. Down to the switch. And then I think I can latch this right under the wire there. Yeah. So there we have it. Um, now, uh, the in order to begin the simulation, you got either you got two options. You got this virtual switch uh, simulation switch here, which looks like a you know toggle switch, or the play button. They both do the same thing. And when you click one, the other one goes right. So I click this one, that one stops. I click this one, that one goes, etc. Now, obviously, no current is flowing because my switch is open. I can close the switch by clicking on it, or I can press the key. It says key equals. I just press the space key, and that opens and closes the switch. All right. Now, I'm going to turn the simulation off because what we've been doing in these series circuits is calculating total resistance, total current, and calculating the voltage drop across each one of these resistors using Ohm's law. And then once we get the voltage drop across each of the three resistors, we've been using Kirchhoff's voltage law to make sure we got all of our calculations correct. Because you'll recall, hopefully, that Kirchhoff's voltage law states that the sum of the voltage drops across all resistors in a series should add up to equal the total voltage. So you've done the calculations by hand. Now we need to place voltmeters in the simulation to uh, check our values. So we do that by going back to the place menu, select component, and uh, voltmeters, ammeters, other kind of meters are under a group called indicators. So click the group drop down, and down here you see indicators. Now we got four different kind of voltmeters. Basically all this is, these four just affect the orientation. So we have horizontal and vertical, H and V, and that's just how you want them wired. You want them wired with the wires horizontally, or do you want them wired in with the wire vertically? And then we have horizontal and vertical with the R means reverse, the polarity is reversed. So depending on which way, if you put the polarity in wrong, you'll get the voltage will display as a negative. We'd re we don't want that, so um, we want to make sure we select the right polarity. So the first resistor, R1, I want just a regular old horizontal meter. Then I'm going to place a vertical meter next to R2. And then a reversed horizontal meter, just the polarity is reversed, underneath here. And I have to do that because, again, the negative side is over here. The more negative side of the circuit is over here towards ground, the more positive side is over here. And because our voltmeters need to be wired in parallel, I just wire it across each of the resistors like this. A little squiggly line, just drag it down to straighten it out. I 
I've got the three meters uh, wired in parallel. So if I turn my simulation on, you'll see not much happens. You do get something displayed on here. There's a little teeny tiny amount of voltage because the switch is actually open. So these voltmeters are really being fooled by the internal voltage of the indicator and other things. But um, to get a real simulation and, and verify the values of your um, calculations, you need to close the switch by clicking on it or pressing the space bar. Now you see VR1, the voltage across resistor 1, should be 2.15. VR2 is 3.94. VR3 is 5.91. And these values should match the ones you calculated by hand. And you'll notice if you add them up, they add up to 12 volts, confirming Kirchhoff's law. And if they don't match the values you calculated by hand, well, you've got a mistake somewhere either in this, this uh, multi-sim simulation or in your hand calculations.